Hi everybody, it's your life science slash biology teacher, Mr. Poser, and today we are continuing our seventh unit on heredity by discussing meiosis and genetic variation. Um, so where we are here is that we defined meiosis, we briefly talked about meiosis at the end of our last video as being a type of cell division that produces gametes. And if you remember from what gametes are from the last video, chromosomes and inheritance, well, you can go back and watch it. But um, for simplicity's sake here, I'll just tell you, gametes are sperm and egg cells. And how sexual reproduction occurs, well, it's the fusion of sperm and egg, right? Each one of these cells is haploid and has one set of chromosomes. And when they combine together to form a zygote, it's called, which will eventually become, you know, a person, um, that cell is diploid, meaning it has two chromosomes here. Okay, so that's the whole point of uh, that's the whole point of meiosis is reproduction here. Um, but what the other part of this video is, well, what this video is about today um, is that we're going to talk about how meiosis happens, how we're able to get those four haploid gametes, those uh, sperm and egg cells. Here, just let me turn off my Wi-Fi really quick. Thank you. Um, how we're able to get those gametes and how it produces what's called genetic variation. How is everybody different from one another? Um, how do siblings become different from one another? How do organisms become uh, slightly varied in very, very small ways? Because that's going to lay the groundwork for us talking about natural selection and evolution in our next unit. So genetic variation is one of the most important concepts in all of biology, in my humble opinion. Okay, so I'm going to start off uh, start us off with this question here. 50% of your genes come from your biological mother, and 50% of your genes come from your biological father. If your siblings have the same mother and father, why aren't you exactly like them? And this is actually something that I've thought about before, before I really took any biology classes, um, was that, okay, I have an older brother, we have the same mom and the same dad, why aren't we identical? Aren't we both a mix of both mom and dad? Well, why aren't we identical if we're both 50-50? Well, meiosis it really is the reason why, and it can that, you know, it can be found out from studying this, uh, studying how genetic variation is produced in meiosis by making these sperm and egg cells. Okay, so this is what meiosis is. We wrote this down in our last video too, um, but here it is again for. Uh, posterity's sake here. Uh, it's cell division that produces four haploid gametes from one diploid cell. And we can split it up into two stages here. So we had, we're ending up with four cells at the end of meiosis rather than two at the end of mitosis, right? So recall way back in, uh, I think it was unit five on the cell cycle, we talked about mitosis. Um, one cell copying all of its DNA, condensing it into chromosomes, moving it to the middle, and splitting up into two cells that are exactly identical daughter cells here. Um, this time we have four, right? So this means we have to split not once, but twice. We have to split tw two times in order to get four cells, because one times two is two, and two times two is four, right? Um, so we have to split this up into two main stages. I would say maybe even three stages, um, but the two stages of meiosis are meiosis one and meiosis two. How appropriate, right? And uh, what's happening here is that we are halving the number of chromosomes. We're cutting it in half, right? So if a diploid cell has, say, for example, six chromosomes, a haploid cell is going to have three. And this picture over uh, right beneath my face here is a really good example. It's a really good overview of what meiosis looks like. Okay, here's our original cell. It is diploid. We got two homologous pairs here. And then, I'm sorry. excuse me. Um, and then during interphase, or more specifically during S phase of the cell cycle, these chromosomes are copied and they form these, uh, and they form these pairs here called sister chromatids. Okay, so they're copied and then during meiosis one, they're split up once, the homologous pairs are split up, and then during meiosis two, the sister chromatids are split up. And I'm going to define those here for us in a second. But the point is we have four genetically different daughter nuclei at the end of meiosis here. That's very different from what we had in mitosis where we had two identical cells. Now we have four slightly genetically different um, gametes over here, okay? So this is gonna be very important when it comes to, uh, you know, the next couple units. All right, but let me define those two terms for you that we were just discussing. Chromosomes that are exact copies of one another are called sister chromatids. Okay, so this is when uh, this is when in S phase, this is what we're forming when a chromosome makes a copy of itself, when DNA copies itself, right? It's called uh, those are called sister chromatids. And what we defined in our last video was homologous chromosomes, right? And homologous chromosomes are two chromosomes that have the same size, same shape. We can put to get 
put them together on a karyotype, right? But homologous chromosomes come from each parent, right? You have 23 pairs of chromosomes, right? So let's just say your chromosome one, you got one chromosome number one from dad, and you got one number one chromosome from mom, right? And those are homologous. Okay, so this picture here, again, does a really good job kind of summarizing the differences uh, between homologous chromosomes and sister chromatids, right? So this blue one, let's just say we got it from, or I don't know, whoever this is, got this from their dad, and the pink one, they got it from mom, not to assign colors to sex, but, it, but let's, I'm just throwing out an example, okay? Um, but these are homologous chromosomes, say, same size, same shape, they're just chromosome number one, right? But then after DNA replication occurs, after this S phase occurs during uh, interphase, right, we have two uh, what are called sister chromatids. We have two blue ones now, and these two copies of each other are called sister chromatids. Um, and same with these two pink ones. These are also sister chromatids. Now what we have are two homologous pairs. Okay, We have a pair of chromosomes here and a pair of chromosomes there. They are homologous, but the sister chromatids are what forms after that's, um, that DNA has been copied. Okay, so these are copies of each other, the blue and the blue and the pink and the pink, but the blue and the pink together are what we call homologous chromosomes, okay? So that's going to be important to note when we're talking about the different phases of meiosis here, because a simple way to put it is that meiosis 1 splits apart homologous chromosomes, and meiosis 2 splits apart the sister chromatids, okay? So here's this first bullet point. Before meiosis, the S phase duplicates the chromosomes, right? So in this picture that I drew down here, this is a diploid cell with duplicated chromosomes, right? So these kind of X shapes is what they form after um, S phase, and these chromosomes have been duplicated or replicated or copied. Any one of those words applies, okay? Um, but this is what they look like with duplicated chromosomes. Then the first stage of meiosis here, meiosis 1, produces two haploid cells with duplicated chromosomes, okay? So check it out. Um, let's just say red and green here are homologous and blue and yellow are homologous. Now during meiosis 1, check it out, those homologous pairs are split up. I'm going to add that actually right here, ready? Homologous pairs, this pairs are split up, okay? That's going to be important to note there, all right? So we've split up our homologous pairs, and we have two haploid cells with duplicated chromosomes after meiosis 1. Okay, but what about meiosis 2? Well, we're going to get there. Hey, right, check it out. Here's meiosis 2. We split the copied chromosomes, which are also called, I'm going to put that in here, sister chromatids, producing a total of four haploid cells. So check it out. These uh, homologous pairs are already split at the end of meiosis 1. Now they're split again. They divide again during meiosis 2, so that all four of these have one set of chromosomes, right? Um, they have a, com you know, they have one one set only as a result of this uh, these copied pairs splitting again. Okay, so this is meiosis two. All right, if we were to sum meiosis up, it'd be okay. Chromosomes are copied, then the homologous pairs split, then the sister chromatids split. That's how easy that we can get when it comes to um, describing how meiosis works, right? And here's another picture. Um, just to give us a broad overview here. Number one, this is where we start. We have um, some homologous chromosomes here, but they're not duplicated yet. Then, step one is that they're duplicated. Um, and then, step two, they start to get paired up. Number three here, check it out. We got, some, uh, we got something funky going on here. The pink and the gray chromosomes are kind of like mixing together. That's what we call crossing over, right? And then step number four, the homologous pairs separate. Okay, here's our homologous pair separating, then meiosis 2, the sister chromatid separate, and there it is. We end up with four genetically different, genetically varied gamete cells, right? So these could be sperm cells, these could be egg cells, but it doesn't matter. They are haploid. They have one set of chromosomes, okay? Um, and they're genetically different from one another. That is huge, okay? So here's a, we're going to make a kind of modified Venn diagram here. Uh, differences and similarities between meiosis and mitosis. And if you can catch a few, if you remember what mitosis is about, and you're you know, listening and taking notes on the, the first part of this video, then you might be able to already tell the difference between meiosis and mitosis. If not, give it a shot and uh, pause this video and we'll come back to it. But I'm going to press forward here if you all don't mind. Okay, so check it out. Let's uh, compare and contrast these two. In meiosis, as we were just looking at, there's four cells are produced. During mitosis, there's only two cells, right? 
The, uh, the daughter cells at the end of meiosis are haploid. At the end of mitosis, they're diploid. Um, in meiosis, these are gametes or sex cells, right? So these could be sperm cells or egg cells that will fuse to form a zygote, all that stuff. Um, mitosis is somatic cells, right? So this is how growth and repair occurs, right? Um, if, I, if I get a boo-boo on my arm, I, you know, cells will divide and it will eventually heal that wound, right? Or how do you grow up? It's from cell division, okay? We talked about that way back in Unit 5, right? Well, we talked about it a lot. Okay, um, meiosis has two divisions, okay, we go, we split from one to two, and then we split from two to four, okay, in meiosis, in mitosis, we only go from one to two, so that's one division. Um, meiosis, and this is the biggest one here, this is the biggest one, meiosis produces genetically unique cells, meaning that they're all slightly different from each other in terms of their DNA, and mitosis produces genetically identical cells, okay, identical, meaning that there's no difference in their chromosomes. And finally, for both, well, they're both types of cell division, and they're both essential for growth and reproduction, okay? Um, so that will be important to know when it comes to, uh, well, getting down to the basics between meiosis and mitosis here, okay? Um, so the last part of this video, we're going to talk about how meiosis is able to produce genetic variation, okay? And the whole reason that, you know, human beings and other complex organisms like ourselves, you know, anything typically multicellular and eukaryote, um, or eukaryotic, I should say, are slightly different from one another, this is the reason why, okay? Meiosis and sexual reproduction, which is the combination of gametes to form new organism, um, a new organism, that should say, not organisms, increase genetic variation. And genetic variation is the differences, oh, now my highlighting's off, differences in genetic material between individuals, okay? So you and I are not identical. We have slightly different genes. And guess what? You and everybody else that has ever existed or will ever exist has, as you know, slightly genetically varied here. All right, so here's a good uh, here's a good example of how these binary fission, which is the reproduction of bacteria, and mitosis produce genetically identical cells. Right. So these are how like single celled organisms divide. But we reproduce obviously through you know sexual reproduction. Right. And we produce genetically different organisms. And meiosis is the reason why. Okay, so there's our gametes, there's our zygote, they combine to form different cells, or, uh, you know, combine to form one genetically unique cell with a complete two sets of uh, unique chromosomes, right? Okay, so the genetic variation is the key thing here. Everybody's slightly different from one another ge genetically. Okay, and one of the reasons why is that the dis distribution of homologous pairs during, of chromosomes during meiosis is random. Okay, so the way we split this up before, um, in this picture, I put red and blue together and yellow and green together. Okay, uh, now, does it have to go red and blue and yellow and green? Absolutely not. Okay, um, the combinations of chromosomes going into each gamete is equally probable, right? So I could have easily, I put red and blue and yellow and green together, but I could have easily just put yellow and blue and red and green together. Okay. Or I could have put, well, yeah, I think that's what I use as the example. But the point is, the way the chromosomes appear together or line up together during meiosis determines how genetically different the cells are going to be, right? I could have lined these up and arranged these chromosomes in a lots of different ways, right? Well, not lots of different ways, in some different ways. Um, and that process right there is called independent assortment. So which means the arrangement of one homologous pair does not depend on the arrangement of any other homologous pair. Okay, so let's just back up here for a second. Remember how I was saying that, you know, I could arrange them any way I wanted. Now, take a look at this picture down here. Let's pretend we got three sets of chromosomes here rather than two, okay? Now, if I gave you three red chromosomes and three blue chromosomes, check it out, there's eight different ways that I could line up the red and blue chromosomes. Take a look at each one of these nuclei here, or these cells, I should say. All right, look, I have all blue, all red on one side, but then I get a mix of each one, and there's lots of different combinations of red and blue that I could have that line up along the middle of that cell, right? So that means if I have three sets of chromosomes that are eight different ways for my chromosomes to line up. There's eight different distributions of chromosomes. But remember, humans, human beings, have 23 sets of chromosomes, right? So that's actually, it's not going to be, uh, it's not going to be 23 times 2 or something like that. It's going to be 2 to the 23rd different ways to line up our 
23 pairs of chromosomes, which is mind-boggling, right? And that actually ends up being 8,388,608 different combinations of how our chromosomes could line up in people, right? So these are just three, meaning that we could line, up, line it up in eight different ways, but if we had 23 sets, that means we could line them up in over 8 million ways, okay? And uh, that by itself is a huge reason why, well, you could, those gametes could end up with any different combination of those chromosomes if we see it through meiosis, okay? The other reason why genetic variation occurs in organisms like ourselves is because of crossing over. And the, this picture over here, this is what I was alluding to. It's called crossing over. And that's the exchange of chromosome segments between homologous chromosomes. Some parts of chromosomes break off and reattach to other ones, right? So not only does it, uh, does independent assortment, the way the chromosomes arrange themselves in the cells and split up between the gametes, um, increased genetic variation, but sometimes the, chroma, the genes on the chromosomes themselves, they switch spots, okay? And we get different combinations of like say pink and gray over here, uh, different combinations of genes so that we get none of our gametes are going to be anywhere close to each other in terms of genetic variation, right? And so cro crossing over results in new combinations of genes on each chromosome, and that increases genetic variation even further, okay? And we're going to be walking through an illustrative example of this in uh, illustrative, illustrative example of this in class, um, and we're going to see this firsthand here if you're in my class. Okay? Um, but here's the bottom line. Crossing over and independent assortment ensure 100% guarantee that gametes produced by meiosis have a unique set of genes. Nobody's going to be genetically identical ever if sexual reproduction is occurring and meiosis is occurring. Nobody's going to be the same. Um, these two pretty much guarantee it. I shouldn't say pretty much. They do guarantee it. Okay? Um, the last thing that can produce genetic variation is something that we've talked about before. Uh, mutations. They also produce genetic variation by producing brand new traits, right? So an environmental change say, such as, I don't know, some UV radiation or any kind of uh, mutagen, it's called, um, can alter DNA. But also when DNA is being copied, there can be errors. And as we learned last unit, those can result in brand new genes. They can result in brand new proteins and drastically alter the appearance or the phenotype of an organism, like this polar bear over here, okay? Um, so there it is. 50% of your genes come from biological mom, 50% of genes come from biological dad. Why aren't you exactly the same? Well, you get a different combination of mom's genes and a different combination of dad's genes than any of your siblings do, unless you're an identical twin. Because of crossing over and because of independent assortment, you got a different set of mom's chromosomes and a different set of dad's chromosomes, a different combination of them than your siblings do. Um, so this answers the question that I had as a little kid, like why aren't me and Sam the same? Well, it's because of uh, these two processes here. All right, that'll be it for this video. We're going to get into genetics in our next video. So uh, let me know if you have any questions. We'll see you next time.